So today I wanted to do something a little bit different on the channel to my normal content. I wanted to talk about the MG Pilot features on the uh, MG4 SE, which is what I'm driving right now. I think they call this the Excite model in Australia, but it's the basic spec. So MG Pilot is the ADAS feature of the MG cars, which is as it Advanced Driver Assist System. That basically covers loads of features from the automatic dipping headlights to to the emergency braking, to the dreaded lane keeping assistance feature on this car. Uh, but what I want to actually show you is a bit of a demo of the cruise control features and the automatic steering and all of that stuff. And to show you this properly, I have to go on the motorway and that's where I'm driving right now. I'm just coming up to junction 37 on the M4, which is in South Wales. So uh, once we get on the motorway, I'll show you on this screen how you use it. So to configure MG Pilot, you press this little car button on the screen and you can see you've got a number of drive assist system modes. You can turn it off, you've got ACC which is adaptive cruise control and you've got TJA which is traffic jam assist. Now I've got it in ACC mode which is the normal adaptive cruise control. And all that will do is uh, keep you a set distance from the car in front and uh, stay at a set speed. But if the car in front slows down, you will slow down as well and then you'll speed up as that car speeds up as well. Now, to turn it on, there's a little button on your steering wheel with a picture of a steering wheel on it. And I just press that and at the moment I am set to 58 miles an hour. So I can take my foot off the accelerator pedal. It's just cruise control so I can adjust the speed I'm going at by pressing this button up or down so I've set it to 61, 62. If I want to adjust the distance uh, that it will stay from the car in front I go left or right and it uh, sets it so it's got three different settings so you can go super close, middle or keep your distance. Now to turn it off it's just as simple as pressing the steering wheel button again but you need to make sure your foot is on the accelerator and ready to go. Uh, you can also cancel it by tapping the brake if you wanted to. So now we're going to look at traffic jam assist mode which is TJA on the display and this is the same as adaptive cruise control only it will also steer you and keep you in your lane. So I'm going to turn that on by pressing TJA on the screen. And then when you're ready to use traffic jam assist, you'll notice that on the main display in front of you, on your speedo display, you'll see a little steering wheel icon. Now if that steering wheel icon is white, then you're good to go and it will work. It can see the lanes either side of you and it knows you're in a lane, so that means it'll work. So you, you activate it the same way as cruise control. You press the steering wheel button on your steering wheel and it is set to 51 and I could let go of the steering wheel if I wanted to, it will beep at me a bit if I do it for too long, but it is effectively steering me now. Now it's very important you keep an eye on that little steering wheel icon on the dashboard. It's now green because it's controlling the steering wheel, but quite dangerously it will suddenly decide to go white and stop steering the car. There's no audible warning at all, it just stops steering you, so you've got to really keep a close eye on what is happening. You obviously shouldn't let go of the steering wheel at all um, and you should keep your foot hovered near the brake in case there's a problem. But, I mean, it does work. It does work. So I'm just coming into a 50 mile an hour zone at the moment because there's some road works and uh, I've got it set to 50 miles an hour and it's following the lorry in front. I'm actually doing 46 at the moment. Uh, I am going to have to come off the motorway in a second because I want to go round and do another lap so as I can test this a bit more for you. Here we go, so I'm going to get my foot ready on the accelerator and I'm going to press the steering wheel button, turned it off. The little steering wheel icon has gone grey or white and I'm coming off the motorway. Now if you follow my channel you'll be aware that I have recently bought a second-hand Tesla as well and that means I've had chance to have a play with autopilot in that car 
and there are a few differences between MG Pilot and Autopilot. So with MG Pilot, the steering on it is a little clunkier. It's almost like it jerks a few degrees at a time. Um, it's not a nice smooth steering experience. It's a little rough around the edges. And the way that it deals with slower cars in front of you, like the one I'm just coming up to now, it kind of backs off quite rapidly. It doesn't sort of see it in the distance and start to slow down gently. It'll go right up to the distance that um, you've got it set to and slow straight down which is not the most comfortable of rides. So if there's a lot of traffic around, it's actually not, not a very nice ride. It's a bit jerky and a bit uncomfortable, especially for the passengers. So in this model of MG4, which is the SE, like I said, or the Excite if you're in Australia, um, you don't get lane change assist. So you're basically stuck in this lane, unless you want to change lanes, in which case you have to indicate, move lanes, and then re-enable the traffic jam assist. Um, it's a bit clunky, but if you've got the next spec up, which I think is the Trophy, um, or the long range, then uh, it does include lanes, cha uh, la lanes change, lane change assist. Now I've not tried it, I don't know what that's like, I'm sure there are other people who've made videos about that out there, um, but this is all about what you get in the bog standard MG4. And let's be honest, this is a lovely little car. For, for the money, this car is dirt cheap. You can pick these up second hand for what under 15,000 when they're, when they're like a year or 18 months old. They are absolute bargain. There's so much tech packed in them for um, an electric car and you get a decent range out of them too. I mean compared to the other smaller cars that are out there you still get over 200 miles of range out of this thing. But going back to Tesla and the autopilot there are some comparisons with that as well. You do get phantom brakes now I'm gonna specifically point out a particular area on the M4 around Port Talbot um, there's a lot of concrete walls and as you're driving through the M uh, through those concrete walls on the M4 then sometimes both the MG and the Tesla will suddenly panic and break and it's really unnerving and I think that's one reason why I don't fully trust these um, automatic driving controls yet. They're just a little too twitchy, a little too twitchy, a little unnerving. I mean, I love my technology, you know I do. I've got an entire YouTube channel dedicated to smart home technology and all the latest and greatest gadgets that I can get my hands on. But this, you're putting your life in the hands of a computer and a computer that's a little bit twitchy at 70 miles an hour. I'm a little nervous about doing that, I have to be honest. I'm sure that they will improve rapidly, and they have improved rapidly over the last few years. Um, but oh, hang on, I've got to come off the motorway here. I'll chat in a minute when I've done another lap. Shut up. Right, I'm back on the M4. What was I saying? I can't remember. Okay, anyway, other features in the MG Pilot suite of ADAS stuff. Um, you also get um, blind spot detection. You know where you get the little uh, light appearing in the wing mirror to tell you that there's somebody at the side of your car? You get that on the Trophy and the long range version, but you don't get that on the basic MG4. That's a bit of a shame because that is quite a useful uh, little feature. I think they should include that on most cars because most cars have got a bit of a blind spot, especially if you haven't got your wing mirrors angled perfectly. If you share a car with someone else, for example, not very often that you sit there making sure the wing mirrors are perfect every time. You normally set them to a compromise angle so as you, you both can see okay, but it's not perfect. Anyway, that's it for this video. I said it was a bit more unusual compared to my normal ones because it's basically me just driving up and down the M4 for a bit. Uh, but uh, I hope you found it useful anyway. Um, usual YouTube stuff. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for free to see more from me. Uh, massive thank you to my channel members which will be listed somewhere on the screen. I've no idea where I'm going to put them today uh, but uh, it's thanks to these guys that uh, I can 
keep this channel going because they pay a little monthly fee and they get early access to my videos and I give them some bonus content as well every now and then. Uh, not as often as I'd like. I should put more effort into that actually. Uh, but I really do appreciate my channel members and patrons as well because uh, you can sign up on Patreon or you can sign up on a YouTube channel membership. So massive thank you to them guys. If you're interested in doing that then go and check out the links in the description. Totally optional because all my content, pretty much all my content anyway, uh, gets published public and uh, just by subscribing that's totally free massive help to the channel as well because that helps spread the word to other people and if you give it a like then it means that YouTube now knows that you liked the video and other people might want to see it as well anyway I've rabbited on I really should do more scripted videos because I just chat absolute rubbish if I don't have a script anyway thank you for watching goodbye